but whether it's shining or raining, we're always grateful to come together as a family in the Lord. I'm told this morning that Corey's not feeling too well, so he's not going to be with us this morning, but good to have Hannah here and Jennifer up there to lead us. So we will be using our hymn note this morning uh, on page 184, uh, the third setting for the order of worship. So all the songs and, and the hymns and the order will be coming from the hymn note. And we ask that, uh, that we will, uh, uh, for those of us who grew up with the hymn note, I'm sure that there will be a kind of a, a rejoicing of going back the old way, but in a way that will also fresh and new. We have a Thanksgiving service coming up on Thanksgiving Day, the 24th, and that will be a, a very unique service. Um, we will have four people sharing their testimonies of how God has blessed them in the year 2023. Uh, so you're encouraged to come. That will be at 10 a.m. on Thanksgiving Day, and it will be a joint service, but it will not be translated the way that we used to do. So with that in mind, let's rise and greet one another in the peace of the Lord, and thereafter we'll start our worship. Good morning. Yep. We turn to page 184 for the order of worship, the third setting. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. We'll take a moment to examine our hearts. We may do so standing or dealing for confession.
O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father. I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as the coin ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead of my command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Congregation, please rise. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, your Son died for the sins of the whole world. Embolden us, O God, to share his love with everyone we meet until the day we hear his gracious blessing. Well done, good and faithful servant. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and rules with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation, please be seated. We continue with our response to reading Psalm 90, verses 1 through 12. God's word says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. 
yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to 70 years or 80, if our strength endures, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is as great as the fear that is do your. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. We continue with the reading of God's word. Zephaniah chapter 1. Be silent before the sovereign Lord, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated those he has invited. On the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the officials and the king's sons and all those clad in foreign clothes. On that day, I will punish all who avoid stepping on the threshold, who fill the temple of their gods with violence and deceit. On that day, declares the Lord, a cry will go up from the fi fish gate, wailing from the new quarter, and a loud crash from the hills. Wail, you who live in the market district. All your merchants will be wiped out. All who trade with silver will be destroyed. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish those who are complacent, who are like wine left on its dregs, who think the Lord will do nothing, either good or bad. Their wealth w will be plundered, their houses demolished. Though they build houses, they will not live in them. Though they plant vineyards, they will not drink the wine. The great day of the Lord is near, near and coming quickly. The cry on the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty warrior shouts his battle cry. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of trouble and ruin, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, a day of trumpet and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the corner towers. First Thessalonians 5. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly, as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep. Let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Congregation, please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25, beginning at verse 14. God's word says, Again it will be like a man going on a journey, who called his servants, and he trusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. 
The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrust me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His, re his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he asked, or he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting what you have not sown and gathering what you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went off and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you shall put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I return, I will have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken away from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the dark darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of our Lord. We turn to page 192 in the hymn note to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation, please be seated. We continue with our next hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My friends, let me start with a few questions this morning. Question number one. What is the most popular parable Jesus ever told? What do you think? You probably would say, most people would say, the parable of the prodigal son. Where the younger son, before the father's death, asked for his portion of the inheritance, took the money, went off and squandered the wealth, and at the moment of his lowest point of life, he knew that he sinned against God, against his father. He repented. He wanted to come back. And the father, seeing him way off, embraced him, took him in, and gave him the position of his son. That story, the prodigal son, has been retold and retold countless times throughout the world because of his universal application. Second question, what is the most touching parable that Jesus ever told? The second one, the touching parable, has to be the parable of the lost sheep, where the good shepherd went after the lost sheep, searched, climbed all places, and when he found the sheep, he brought it home rejoicing. That shepherd is the good shepherd, is our Lord Jesus himself. Last question, what is the most practical parable Jesus ever told? What parable applies more to how we live our lives today? How God acts and we act to us. How we act and how we react to God. Which parable is the most practical? It is the parable in our reading this morning, our gospel reading, Matthew 25, the parable of the talents. Many of you know this parable well. Jesus told about a master who was getting ready to go on a long journey. So he called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. Then he left. Then after a long, long time, he came back. And when he returned, he called for an accounting. Their servants, those two who invested wisely, they were rewarded. The one who did not invest, he was condemned. That's the parable. Now, this parable is practical for many reasons. One, it shows how God treats us. Two, it shows how God reacts to us. And three, oftentimes, it shows how we treat God's blessings and God's gifts. There are two parts to this parable. Part number one, the master entrusts his wealth to his servants. Part number two, the master returned and he required an accounting from these three servants. So let's look into the text in these two parts of the parable. Part number one, the master entrusts his wealth to his servants. Look at verses 14 through 18 of our text. Here's what God's word says. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and he trusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, we understand a talent is a measurement, is a measure of money. In each case of these servants, every servant got a different amount, but all got a lot. Understand, my friends, the one with five talents got about 100 years worth of wages. The one with two talents got about 40 years worth of wages. And even the one with one talent, he got 20 years worth of wages. That's a lot of money. 
for each one of these three servants. The master in our story, in the, in the text this morning, represents the Lord Jesus himself, who said, I go to prepare a place for you. And that comes from John chapter 14, where Jesus says, I will leave you, I will go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back for you. We are the servants in the text, in the parable. The talents in the parable represent our abilities, our possessions, our opportunities to serve the Lord. We all have three T's. We have time, we have talents, we have treasures to use for the Lord. The key is not how much we have, but rather how faithful we do and use with what we have. Our job is to be faithful to do what God has called us to do. That each one of us is gifted at least with one gift from God. We may have more, but at least one gift, and that is the gift of faith. Without the gift of salvation faith, you and I will not be sitting in God's house this morning. And with that, we have come to acknowledge that we are sinners. With that salvation faith, we have come to acknowledge that Jesus is God's Son, that He came for us, that He died on the cross for our sins, and that He rose again to give us life. And with that faith, God calls us to strengthen and feed the faith so that we can grow in relationship with God. And that growth is by the power of the Holy Spirit with you and me submitting to God's Word, submitting to the working of the Holy Spirit. So our job is to be faithful to do what God has called us to do. God has the right, and I have the responsibility. God himself is the master, and I am the manager. God the Lord is the Lord, and I am simply a servant. Now, many of you do great things in God's house in this world that I cannot do. But you and I also know there are certain things I can do and designed to do and called to do and trained to do, perhaps a little bit better than you can. But we all need each other. And God says we are his body with various parts of the body, gifted differently in order to build up the church of God, in order to advance the kingdom of God through the proclamation of the gospel by the working of the Holy Spirit. So we're all gifted differently, but we do need each other. And God's house calls all of us to use our time, our talents, our resources, our treasures to build up God's church, his kingdom. Now we find there's a huge difference between Peter and Andrew in the Bible, isn't it? Peter and Andrew were brothers, but they were very different. One was loud, the other was quite simply quiet and reserved. One spoke to crowds, the other was more one-on-one, -on -one, more personable. One had more strengths, but also a lot of weaknesses. Peter was bold and courageous, but oftentimes because he was bold and courageous, he did not really kind of sort through everything through prayer and through his thinking. So he came up pretty hard at times. And oftentimes, he got in trouble. But Peter, understand, as bold, courageous as he was, Peter would not have witnessed thousands of people coming to faith in Jesus on Pentecost if he was not brought to faith in Jesus by his brother Andrew. So we have a role to play, my friends. In our text, verses 15 through 18 tell us, that the servants got the talents and they went to work. They were gifted. They were given responsibilities. And they received the responsibilities and they went to work. That's the way God works, isn't it? God gives, then God leaves us alone. He doesn't force us. He gives and then he leaves it in our hands. He opens doors of opportunities. He gives visions and dreams. 
And he allows us to see just a little of what we might do with the gifts that he has given us. That he waits for us to use what he has given to see if we will be faithful with the gifts that he has given. And this is the time. We are all gifted with time, talents, and treasure. So the question for us this morning is, are we using God's gifts? Are we using, employing the talents that God has given us? Ask yourself this morning, do you play an instrument? Can you sing? Can you talk to people? Can you handle a broom? If you say yes to any of these, then you and I can certainly serve the Lord. It's true, my friends. We are happiest when we do what we're made to do. But we need to be reminded of something very important. Very often, God won't let us do what we want to do until we have demonstrated that we are willing to do that which we don't want to do. In other words, God, with his good understanding, don't expect God to give you more until you're faithful what, we, what you have, what you have been given. So you want to pray in such a way to become like Peter. God says, what I have given you today and what you have today, be faithful with it. Don't ask for more until you have been faithful with the little that you are given. My friends, do what you know. Do and use what you have been given and do so faithfully. Don't skip any step. Here's one of the ways I encourage my coworkers. Do more than less. Give more than less. Offer more than less. Now, I want to share this with you, not in pride, but as an example of faithfulness, of what it means to faithfully serve the Lord. Now, I'm sure that my wife doesn't want me to say it, but as a good example, because I have seen it all these years, my wife could play a great role of a professional pastor's wife. But where do you see her in all these years? Where do you find her? in children's ministries, in children's Sunday school. And by God's blessings, our Sunday school, children's Sunday school, has been blessed these years. Apart seeing her in Sunday school, children's ministries, other times you will see her probably no more. She's serving behind the scenes, encouraging Connecting, managing, supporting, and praying. All these years, not one word, at least to my knowledge, I can't do it. Why? Because she knows she's been gifted by God. Why? Because she knows that she's been called to God's house at hope. And there is a role, there is a place, there is a ministry, there is a need for her to respond. And for these past 20 years, she's been faithful, serving and leading our children's Sunday school. My friends, thank God that God has also raised many of us here in God's house to do his work, who get here first, leave last, and never stop in between. And you're one of them, many of you. When I came in this morning, I was greeted by Daniel. Now, I won't be surprised. They will see Daniel not because he works here throughout the week, but you'll see him frequently in God's house, probably late at night sometimes as well. We are gifted with many members of the church who are faithful to God, who love this church. They don't ask how this church can be a blessing to them. Rather, they ask, how can I be a blessing 
to this church. Whether it be the children's Sunday school, youth ministries, fellowships, visitations, or maintaining and fixing, cleaning up the church buildings, many of their attitudes are, let me add it, I'm willing. And that's how the church of God is strengthened. And that's how the church of God can also grow. Part two of our text. The master returns and demands an accounting. And that's verses 19 through 25. You and I understand every company will have to do an accounting at the end of the year. And it's rightly so. That accounting that will audit their books to see where they are and how they use their funds and everything else. My friends, at the end of our life journey in this world, you and I will also be audited, so to speak. By whom? By God himself. We will have to give an account of how we have used our time, our treasure, our talents, all the gifts that God has given us. Look at verse 19 of our text. God's word says, After a long time, the master of those servants returned, and settle accounts with them. If all that we have today comes from God, then it is only right that he has to settle accounts with us. What we have been given with the things that God has blessed us with, understand, my friends, Jesus is coming back, and he's coming soon. Here's what God's word says in Romans 14, verse 12. So that each one of us will give an account of himself to God. Each one of us, regardless of your age, as long as you are in Christ, we are given not only an opportunity, but God's request and God's command. You will have to give an accounting. Now let's compare and contrast the two servants, the first one and second one with the third one. And when you have a good understanding of that, you will understand why the master responded the way he did. The difference between the first two servants and the third one. The first two were determined to make a profit. The third servant was determined to not take a loss. The first two received the gift. The third servant refused the gift. The first two viewed the gift as an opportunity. The third servant saw it as a problem. The first two allowed the master's gift to change their lives. The third servant refused to let the gift touch his life. The first two invested. The third servant wasted. The first two saw a blessing. The third servant saw a burden. The first two knew the master. The third servant had no clue. My friends, do you know God? That Jesus is the Lord and the Savior. Do you know God? That God is gracious and merciful. Yes, you may have failed like this third servant, but you can always come to God. And God is gracious. God is good. God is merciful. And whoever comes to him in confession, in repentance, he receives them and he forgives them. But God has also given us his gifts. And he calls each one of us, use my gifts given to you for my glory for my kingdom, for the sake of the lost. And the ones who are faithful like the first, second servants invested what they were given. They were told, good and faithful servant, well done. The point of this parable, my friends, is very clear. Let us use what God has given us to strengthen his church, to advance his gospel, to advance his kingdom by sharing his love, by sharing the good news of Jesus. That's very clear. And to be found faithful 
and doing that until Christ returns. That's at the heart of the gospel, the parable this morning. So my friends, understand, you don't lose your talents by investing them. You lose your talents by burying them, by not using them. When you invest your gifts for Jesus, God will always honor that investment. So God calls us to what? To do our very best in Jesus' name and leave the results to him. There are thousands of churches across the United States that one time were five talents, two talents churches. But they have buried their talents. And now we see a lot of empty churches across the United States. There are thousands of Christians who reached a level of maturity in Christ, in their walk with the Lord, and then became self-satisfied, complacent, and indifferent. They decided they did not need to grow anymore. They don't have to pray anymore. They don't have to serve anymore. They do what they want. They started dying spiritually because they bury their talents. My friends, the message of this parable has not changed. God is still the master. Your gifts, my gifts, where did they come from? They came from God. And understand, my friends, the gifts that God has given are to be used for God for his house. It is never intended to elevate, to satisfy the self. So gifts, talents come from God, and they are his. So God says to us this morning, invest what I have given you and see what will happen. Everyone present here this morning has a decision to make. If you are a Christian, maybe your fire for the Lord is flickering. Your prayer life has dwindled. You're not tithing, not giving sacrificially to God because your first love towards God is no longer or has been replaced by something else. You're not sharing your faith with others. You're burying your talent. For those who are not yet Christians, please realize that you have been given talents as well. God loves you. No question about that. No matter how your response is, God chooses to love you. God doesn't leave anybody out. Everybody gets something, and he waits to see what you will do, what, we, what he has given you. If you are here this morning, and Jesus is not your Savior, then God wants to see what you will do with the seed of faith that has been planted in your life. Will you invest it? Or will you bury it, waste it? God wants to see what we will do with what he has given us. God is certainly waiting patiently, and God is certainly inviting you to come. There's a story of a king who called to his, two of his servants for a task that he want them to respond. These two servants were given the same wages and told to fill a basket with water from a nearby well, saying that he would come back sometime later to check on them. After dumping one or two baskets of water into the buckets of water into the basket, one of the servants complained and said, what is the good of doing this useless thing? The moment I pour the bucket of water into the basket, because the basket has holes, the, rudder, the water once runs out. After two buckets, he was so frustrated, and he said, I'm not going to do this anymore. It's a foolish thing. It's a wasteful time. I'm out. So he left. The other servant, before he left, said to him, 
We have our wages, don't we? We're called to do it until the master returns. It is the master's business, not ours. He's the wise master. I may not understand all that he wants me to do, but I know what I need to do because he told me what I need to do. So one servant in frustration, complaining, thinking what he was doing useless, he left. The other one, not fully understanding why the master told him to do what, exactly what he was doing, but he knew what he needed to do, and he continued to do what he was told to do. And here's the beautiful thing. He, keep, he kept on doing, trying to, with his bucket, got the water from the well. Little by little, he emptied the well in time. And once he emptied the well, he looked down into the bottom, at the bottom of the well. He saw something shining from the well at the bottom. And he noticed it might be a ring. And he noticed it might be a diamond ring. And guess what? He went down, he got it up, and it was a diamond ring. And at that moment, he realized why his master told him to empty the well. He says, I see the use of pouring water into the basket. If the bucket had caught the ring before the well was dry, it would have been filtered out in the basket. The king was actually looking for his lost diamond ring. And my work was not in vain. My friends, the king found his most faithful servant. God has an important task for each one of us today. God is looking for lost but precious souls. Go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I will be with you always. God has given us the gifts and resources to do just that. To go and make disciples of all nations. My friends, let us be like the servant in the story. Did not fully understand why the master told him to empty the well. But he knew what he needed to do. And he got the time, the resources, and the talents to do that. And he was faithful. May God grant you that conviction to be that servant, to be diligent and be faithful, growing in relationship with the Lord Jesus and pointing others to Jesus as Lord and Savior who came for you, who died and rose again for you, and who says to you, no matter what happens, I will never leave you. Come to me so that you can be strengthened. Come to me so that you can be forgiven. Come to me so that you may have life and have it abundantly. The Lord be with you, my friends, and grant each one of us a heart of a faithful servant because we have received every good from a God who loves us and who is coming back to bring us to be with him. Amen. My friends, let's rise to uh, sing together, Create in Me the Offertory. Congregation, please be seated. We continue with offering.
congregation, please rise for prayers. Let us pray. Gracious God, guide and protect your church as he endeavors to share the gospel of Jesus in many circumstances of this sinful world. Gracious God, embolden leaders of your church, of your kingdom, to speak your word with conviction. Open the ears of those who hear the gospel of Jesus in all circumstances and grant increase of faith in numbers wherever people gather around word and sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray that you strengthen this congregation so that we are a beacon of your gracious love, calling one and all to join us to celebrate the good news of Jesus shining in this darkened world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, you call us to faith in your Son, our Lord Jesus. We are forgiven through the blood of Jesus. We are strengthened through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we are fed by your word of truth, your Bible. We ask, O oh Lord, that you continue to raise us up so that we recognize the gifts that you have given us. And by your working in our lives, we desire to employ these gifts to further your kingdom, to share your faith, to our faith in you, and to point others to Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. May we do so courageously, may we do so faithfully, and do so unto you for your glory and for your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, guide and protect the officers of all nations, Lord. Armed forces deploy and police at home. We ask, O oh Lord, that you bless those who work in all areas of education, those who grow, tend, and distribute food, and all who respond in emergencies as well. We lift up our teachers, our parents, all those who serve in such a way to lead the next generation. We ask that you touch them in a special way so that they will work for the common good of all those who are in contact with them. We also ask, O oh Lord, that you continue to raise up your people, especially during this last days of the world, that we are awakened, that we're ready for your coming, Lord Jesus, that we remain faithful to you and continue to be used by you to touch lives at home, within the family, at school, at work, within the church, and even in the community, Lord. Use us to shine for you and use us to point others to you. And we ask, O oh Lord, that your name be glorified. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, grant peace and love in families. Give wisdom to parents and willingness to children to learn. And provide faithful congregations, caring friends, and extended relatives to support them through all the changes of their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, at this time, we give you thanks for the birth of Harvest, proud parents of Derek and, Yo and Zoe, that you, O oh Lord, your hand of blessing be upon this precious harvest this day and forward, asking that you lead her and use all others to bring her up in her relationship with you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, hear the prayers of your people near and dear to us, including those we name at this time. So Sean, Tim, Josephine, Mr. Wu, and those we name in our hearts. According to your gracious will, O oh God, we pray that you give them healing, relief, and comfort, so that they may live out each day in peace and joy, knowing, O oh Lord, that you are with them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. These and any other things you have asked us of you, O oh God, grant us for the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And in his name, together we say, Amen. Amen. My friends, we'll continue with the service of the sacrament Found on page 194 in the hymn note, 194. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. 
Let us give, let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is surely meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times, in all places, give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and everlasting God. Therefore, with angels, archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, O Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. When he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. When he given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you do. Drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take us away the sin of the world. 
in the hymn note. Congregation, please rise. Now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to light attain the Gentile and the glory of thy people to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to your mighty God. They have refreshed us through this sanitary gift. And we implore you of your mercy. You will strengthen us through the same in faith towards you, in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keeps you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We sing together our closing hymn.